Hi there, welcome back. So why is perception difficult? Well, let me use the example of the visual system to give you a sense of why it is we have to use knowledge or cognition to make sense of sensation. So uh, on your screen right now is a picture of an eyeball. It's spherical and we know that light goes through the lens and is focused on the back of your eye on and that layer that it gets focused on on the back of your eye ideally is called the retina and the retina contains a special class of cells called photoreceptors and those cells do something amazing they they're translators they convert light into action potentials into neural signals that the brain can understand right the brain can't understand light but it can understand action potentials so photoreceptors convert light into action potentials so far so good right well except for one part your lens when it projects the image of the outside world onto the back of your eye it flips that image upside down you see the world upside down right huh nobody sees the world upside down well the back of your eyes do kind of curious Anyway, back to photoreceptors. It turns out that there are two main types of photoreceptors, rods and cones, and their names come from their shapes. One's shaped like an ice cream cone and the other's shaped like a cylinder or rod. Now, an interesting fact about photoreceptors in your retina is that they point towards the back of your head. You'd expect the photoreceptors to point forward where the incoming light is, especially because what happens on the ends of the photoreceptors is really important. But it turns out those photoreceptors aren't pointed towards the light, they're pointed towards the back of your head. So all the light that comes into your eye has to go through all these layers of tissue to try to reach the tips of the rods and cones. Now, not all the information makes it, right? A lot of the information gets absorbed in the by the different cells and tissues that are in between it and the tips of the photoreceptors um, information that falls between rods and photoreceptors are all lost so any light that's out there in the world that does not fall on a photoreceptor you have no record of it as far as you know it doesn't exist because your brain hasn't detected it okay or your eyeballs haven't detected it it gets worse than that. Um, <laughs> some people wonder, what does it feel like to be blind? Well, it turns out we're all blind. Every single person is blind. Because in each of our eyeballs, we have a hole. And we're blind to any light that falls in that hole. That's called the blind spot, because it's a spot in each eye where you're blind. And why do we have a hole in each of our eyes? Well, the um, photoreceptors and the other kinds of cells that make up your retina, they don't work by Wi-Fi. They work by cables, and that cable is called your axon. And so the axon needs to leave the retina and connect to your brain. So there needs to be a way for those cables to get out and connect to get out of your eyeball and connect to your brain. Your retina also needs all the goodies that neurons need, oxygen and glucose, and that comes from blood. So your retina needs blood. Well, those blood cells, those blood vessels have to get into your eyes somewhere, and they also come in through the blind spot. So the blind spot is a place where there are no photoreceptors. Because there are no photoreceptors, all the light that falls in the blind spot is gone. We don't see it. We are blind to it. You see that, right? When you walk around in the world, two big spots in, right in front of you where you can't see anything. You don't. But that's what your sensory system is detecting. Hmm. Why don't you see it? Because of cognition, because your brain is constantly trying to fill in missing information. And so it fills in the blind spot. 
and it fills it in with its best guess as to what's there because it doesn't know because there's no sensation in the blind spot. Also, any light that falls into your eye that lands on the blood vessels instead of on a photoreceptor, that's all gone. So do you, do you see that? Do you, do you realize you're looking at the world through a maze of blood vessels? Nope, because your brain fills it in. Um, there's another, oh, uh, I should say on the left, bottom left side of the slide that you're looking at now is a photograph of a human retina. And you can see where the blind spot is. It's that brighter yellow disc and you can see the blood vessels going to it because that's how they get into your eyeball. Uh, next to that is a cartoon drawing of a retina um, that's got circles of different colors, red, green, and blue, and it also has some white circles on it. Those different colored circles tell you where different um, types of photoreceptors live. It turns out that cones only live in the central part of our fovea. I'm sorry, in the central part of our retina, or what's called the fovea. And then outside of the fovea, almost all of our photoreceptors are rods. Here's the thing, rods are colorblind. Did you know you're colorblind? You are. Actually, most of your vision is colorblind. Um, hmm, weird, right? Uh, we're, I'm going to, normally in an in-person lecture, I would pass out sheets of paper right now that had a drawing like the, that's shown at the bottom of the slide so that we can all get the experience of seeing our blind spot. And basically what happens with that piece of paper is when you move it to the right place, um, one of those green dots at a certain position will disappear. And that green dot disappears when it falls on your blind spot. And you have one in each eye, so that's why there's two dots. Um, but what I'm going to do for this class now is I have a, a, under the activity section, there's online um, blind spot uh, demonstrations that you'll participate in later. Okay, why else is uh, sensation ambiguous? Well, um, because a lot of information can be hidden or blurred. So if you're looking at uh, the world with one eye, especially, or if you're looking at things that are far away with both eyes, you have something called the inverse projection problem. And that is essentially that different things in the three-dimensional world project the same two-dimensional image on the back of your eyeball. So what do I mean by that? Well, the retina, if you were to cut my eye open and take out the retina, it would lay out flat on a table. Ooh, that was a gruesome image. Okay, so retinas are, are flat, but the world's three-dimensional, right? So uh, a lot of information is lost when you take three-dimensional information and you reduce it down to two-dimensional information. That's just another way of saying it. Occlusion is also um, an, uh, a related phenomenon. Um, right here in the slide, I have a picture of a, a woman walking along. Um, when you look at her, is the first thing that comes to your mind, oh, that's interesting, that woman has no legs. No. You don't see the legs, but you assume that they're there. Right? Um, uh, you don't... Um, is, is, is that woman in a position where she just happens to occlude a, a poodle or a hole in the sidewalk or a bird or a small miniature Superman? We don't know because we can't see what's occluded, right? We have to make a guess about it. So um, we miss a lot of information. Um, and uh, another reason is that um, that, that perception is, is challenging and sensation isn't enough, is that when you look at any object, the image of that object that's projected back onto your flat retinas, your two-dimensional retinas, changes as a function of the viewpoint that you have on that object. So what do I mean by that? I mean that if I look at my cell phone this way, it looks like a rectangle, but if I look at my cell phone this way, it looks like a line. Or this way, every view of my cell phone 
projects a different image onto the back of my eye. So how does my brain know that I'm looking at the same thing if the image is changing all over the place? Guess you're going to need cognitive processes to help you figure that out. So our ability to recognize objects is not entirely, but it's mostly viewpoint invariant. In other words, I can recognize my cell phone from this view and that view and this view and this view and this view. Another a, a final reason we need um, to study perception and we need more than sensation is that even when everything goes just right, perception is really hard. Um, it feels ridiculously easy. So we think it's simple, right? We think things are straightforward. But even if you're trying to recognize, if you, if, but even if you build a computer that tries to do object recognition and you create a situation that's super simple, like a picture of this stop sign, all of the steps that that computer program is going to have to go through to recognize that stop sign are numerous and complicated. We don't have a whole lot of algorithms that can recognize the sort of things that you recognize instantly when you go for a walk across campus. So perception is just plain difficult. Okay, that's it for 5.2. Come right back for 5.3.